Hi people, morning or evening, back here again as always, Andrew as usual. Yeah, it's Goetia time again. I'll be covering the 45th spirit of the Goetia. The 45th spirit is Vine or Vinea. He is a great king and an earl and appeared in the form of a lion riding on a black horse and bearing a viper in his hand. His office is to discover things hidden, witches, wizards and things past, present and to come. He, at the command of the exorcist, will build towers, overthrow great stone walls overthrow great stone walls and make the waters rough with storms. He governed the 36 legions of spirits, etc, etc. Now, um, and this, and his seal is this, which thou, where thou is aforesaid, etc. Yeah. Um, there is also an editorial footnote uh, with the section that it says, where it says that he appeared in the form of a lion. It says, or with the head of a lion or having a lion's head in some codices. Now, um, yeah, let's dive right in. Vine is mercurial with a strong Venusian uh, affinity. Specifically, zodiacally, the zodiac, the, the zodiac sign Virgo and uh, Libra. So, mercurial in the sense of Virgo and Venusian in the sense of Libra. Those are the two strongest energies within him, or just plain energies within him, the dominant energies in him. Um, his description in the Goetia is completely wrong, like literally completely wrong, in terms of his skill set, what he specializes in, his office. No, they got it in reverse, I want to say. They made a, a boo-boo, so to speak, regarding their divinations or whatever source they use to, to um, come about his skill set, his office if you will and they got it in reverse now um, uh, one moment yeah um, what he can do he has no specialty honestly he anything is on the table when I say anything I mean any objective is on the table his uh, modus operandi so the way that he goes to work by default entails uh, being impulsive, enthusiastic, having a good deal of fantasy, so imagination about him, uh, focusing on uh, his own well-being as well as do that of those whom he serves, or as well as those whom he serves, his well-being. Um, and... Um, Give me a second. Yeah, and he's very emphatic. Emphatic in the sense of he literally like puts his heart and soul into what he does, uh, regardless of what or which task he is assigned to. Um, I'm sorry, my mind is a bit all over the place. Excuse me. Um, it, it has to do with his energy by default, but it's not uh, a reference to him. It's also partially me. And yeah. By default, the things that the zodiac signs Virgo and Libra deal with, and the rulers, obviously, Mercury and uh, Venus. So think of anything. With Venus, think of becoming more attractive, becoming better looking, becoming more refined and polished personality-wise, or anything that you want to, to, to polish or refine, or anyone on whose behalf you want to... I mean, anyone you want to become better looking, so on your behalf, or on their behalf. Um, and with Virgo, for example, so with Mercury, think craftsmanship, think of becoming better at your job or forging an excellent career for yourself or improving your own level of uh, physical health, for example, through the default conventional means, diet, exercise, etc., etc., uh, heightening your immune system, all of that stuff, all of that stuff. Also, um, taking care of uh, pets like small animals and seeing to their well-being and so on and so forth or also herbal properties plants growing plants with medicinal or pharmaceutical um, uh, that have medicinal or pharmaceutical value about them you name it any of these things are on the table okay he has no specific specialty to put it that way um yeah, um, in terms of what type of spirit Vine is or Vinea is, Vine is a fallen angel. He um, is an ex-member of the Order of Thrones, but more applicable, so active, um, 
active and applicable to the human world. He is more active within the sphere of powers. So an X order of powers. So the angelic order of powers, obviously. Um, in terms of appearance, Vine. Oh boy, yeah. He's the only spirit I, I can remember having ever done this. Vine appears um, as a crow that is of human height and size. So a crow that is in human height and size or of human height and size that holds a sword in his hand and he's riding either a horse or a lion and or at the same time there is the silhouette or an outline of a lion in front of his face and the crow sometimes wears like medieval knight's armor or similar and all of these appearances just like inter just show up intermittently in some kind of hypothetical whirlwind not a literal whirlwind hypothetically speaking you know all of that stuff is going on at the same time in appearance wise and when i interacted with him i was like wow okay i was like <laughs> Okay, it's the first time that I've seen that. Like, really, like, and I could see the fantasy and the, impu the impulsiveness within him. Uh, his entire way of working is like someone that's like, you know, okay, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go, <laughs> I'm ready to go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, very impulsive and enthusiastic, and someone that has a tremendous amount of imagination about him. You know, it's like the type of person that daydreams and does nothing but scribble unicorns flying over purple rainbows and shit like that okay that is um, somewhat what Vine is all about not meant negatively or offensively towards him of course it's purely in a manner of speaking um, now his true form angelic form is that of a, somewhat of a Cherubian looking angel but I've seen several angels from the Order of Thrones look that way um, Order of Thrones in theory but again applicable to uh, in an applicable form applicable to the human world i mean it's the order of powers and um, it's um, a bare-chested angel with black hair kind of like a gothic looking figure with um, wearing a black um, robe for bottoms and has white wings with a black outline so the edges have a black outline and holding dual swords in his uh, arms in his hands but these swords are like um, like from swords from the Eurasian steps in I want to say ancient times or pre-medieval times like uh, between the zero and the 10th century something like that like like Mongolish looking swords when the Mongols or when the Huns were still active like that uh, the, the, the edge of the tip of the blade is curved it's curved backwards uh, let me see if I have anything else, if there is anything else that I, uh... no, uh, that's it, nothing else, bye bye.